Welcome to Category 5, Technology TV, episode number 451 for Tuesday, the 10th of May, 2016. So great to have you here. My name is Robbie. Please help me welcoming the one and only Jeff Weston. Hey, I'm back. How are you? I'm wonderful. I want to hear all about your trip. But before we get into it tonight, what is happening on the show? Oh, man, so much stuff going on. Tonight, we're going to be answering the age-old question that's been asked since the dawn of time. The cavemen asked it. Is it really worth upgrading to SSD? <laughs> it's, it's true. Sounds great. Uh, we're also going to be continuing our series, come to think of it, how to breathe new life into old hardware. So we're going to be taking a look at... Uh, that old laptop back there. We're going to fire it up with both the built-in hard drive. We're going to do some non-scientific tests to see how fast it is. And we're so gonna we're not going to be blowing things up tonight? Not blowing things up tonight. Gah! Unless, you know, maybe there's time at the end of the show. Yes! Uh, then we're also going to stick a beautiful Kingston solid-state drive into that old computer. I'm excited about we're this. We're just going to do the head-to-head, one-to-one comparison. You know, does it really make a difference to spend the little bit extra throw an SSD into that computer and boot it up. Doing some real-time time trials. Sounds fantastic. Can't That's wait. That's true. That's good. It's good times. Jeff, are you ready with the news? I uh, I am re- ready with oh, the news. Oh, well, look at this. Boom. So prepared. I may have been off for a while, but I'm not rusty yet. Yeah, what do we got? All right, well, here's what's coming up in the Category 5.TV newsroom. Can I just say before we start... Um, Uh, Shelly was here just before you. Oh. <laughs> the camera's down here. There we go. Jeff's up here. Oh, there, All right. There we go. There All right. All right. Take it away. <laughs> I'll fix it, yeah. All right. Uh, I'm like getting like a, a crop top going on. There we go. All right. All right. Here's what's coming up in the Category 5.TV newsroom. The discovery of an Instagram glitch has earned a 10-year-old, yes, you heard me right, a 10-year-old boy $10,000 from the Facebook bug bounty. Netflix knows what you'll click on before you do, and uh, we won't see a new Need for Speed game this year, which is unfortunate. But lastly, a holographic smartphone has been developed by researchers in Canada. Stick around, the full details are coming up later in the show. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Welcome to the show. I'm Robbie. And I'm Jeff. Hey to our chat room. Hey to Songbird. Haven't seen you around in a while. Mm-hmm. Nice to see you. Albuquerque Turkey is joining us tonight. We've also got Cal Hydro and uh, Leech and X1. Linux 2656. Like the first part of your name. Mm-hmm. It alludes to uh, an awesome operating system, which we're going to be looking at a little bit tonight. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. We may bit. be biased. We're uh, ever so slightly biased towards <laughs> Linux. I'm sorry, Windows users. You've found the wrong show. Once in a while, we show Windows, but that's really just for the monetization on YouTube. Pretty much, yeah. That's it. That's yep. it, folks. And for so some good laughs. Our Linux fans can click on those banner ads and watch the show on YouTube and help us out. That would be a great help. Indeed. Hey, Jeff, you just yes. got back from the Caribbean. I did, yeah. Tell us about the trip. It was uh, awesome seeing you from the boat. Having your phone, of all things, Skype video is a wonderful, wonderful thing. I really enjoy like ours. doing the news from Mexico. I really think we need to get a Mexico studio for Cat5. You think and, so? And I will gladly be the correspondent down we'll there. We'll see if we can work that into the budget. <laughs> all right. No, it was good. I decided to take my family on a road trip. Um, my wife and I... Uh, Didn't look like there were any roads where you were going. Uh, no. No, I kept those off camera. Although I do have... <laughs> uh, yeah. I did film the road part of it okay um but uh, no i took my family on a road trip we decided to do that uh because i mean how often are you going to be able to take a family on a cruise hmm. when, you know never it gets quite expensive when you continues got... to rub it in folks <laughs> continues to rub it in i've saved up for a while I i've say got so. three kids so it, so do it, I. it costs a lot and i know yeah i know that i couldn't uh, i couldn't do that right now fair enough but uh you had a good time yeah it was good we uh we did a road trip down to, to tampa uh, hopped on a cruise ship, uh, hit a couple of ports there. The kids ap- absolutely loved it. S- cool. uh, swam with stingrays, snorkeling. Yeah, it was nice to see pictures of the kids having a blast, eh? And yeah. getting to go see some various things. The cool thing about the trip, they had no clue. 
We've kept this secret like for months, and it was the trip itself. You the kept trip se- itself. Really? We loaded them up oh to get ready gosh. for school. Come and on, then, kids! And then we didn't. Do we turn. have to go to school today, Dad? No, <laughs> we'll go to the Car- Caribbean instead. <laughs> yeah, no, we didn't tell them anything. We pl- there every aspect of the trip was a, was a surprise. So it's okay. We're we're not going to school. We're going on vacation. Where are we going? Can't tell you. You got to find out when we get there. It'll be two days from now. Yeah, so, we're just gonna drive. Yep, twenty eight hours south. later, ended up in twenty eight hours. They were excited. And did you you took shifts, I guess, for the no, drive? No, no, yeah, I did a straight run. Did you sleep? Uh, I got like half an hour. No. <laughs> yeah, we so did, st- we stopped in North Carolina. I've heard of jet lag, but that'd be like that'd be nasty. So when did you, when you got to the boat? Were you were you out of it? No, uh, we were okay. We gave ourselves forty eight hours to get down. Oh, okay. But you gave I, yourself some layover time? Yeah, but I decided, okay. you know what, I'm just going to push through so we can get an extra day at the beach. And that's what we did. Oh, nice. And uh, so I got some good rest before we loaded up on the boat. Great. That was a lot of fun. Any, but I missed you guys. Any viewers from uh, Mexico, the Caribbean? Where where, uh, where all were you? Uh, uh, Cayman Islands and Cozumel, Mexico. Uh, Tampa, Florida. We also stopped in uh, Myrtle Beach. Sounds rough. West Virginia. Stopped in Myrtle Beach. Oh, yeah. We just, you know. Swam for three days. Two. Two days. It was supposed to be one day. We were going to go to Washington, but we're like, yeah, the beach is better than politics. So Nice. Well, the, the whole community and, and us here, we appreciated you taking the time out of your trip to actually remote in and, oh, and my, do the news. It was my that pleasure. was pretty neat. And from a techn- technological standpoint, how cool is it? I, I think about how broadcasting used to be, where you had to have rigs of equipment Mm -hmm. and gear and satellite dishes and big phones that use satellite networks to call in your call in and it sounded terrible and it looked terrible if you had video yep and now what are you using like you had your cell phone yeah i just i had my wi-fi on the boat or it's just like that Uh, no it's just my data i got i got in um (laughs) i'm just out on the ocean folks broadcasting live from a thing that fits in my pocket the cell, That's phone, pretty cool. cell phone company had a great plan. It's really cool. It seven bucks a this day. This is where we're country. at. Technologically, this is, this is an exciting time for broadcasters. It was. It, it really is. The people on the boat got a kick out of it, too, because I just, you know, I walk up onto the deck, and I'm like, yeah. that's a good spot. The sun's right. And I sit down in a beach chair and just start recording. And I finish, and there's this couple behind me. They start snickering. They're like, that was amazing. We're on some sort of a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> some sort of a TV show. <laughs> and then he said, it's Category 5 technological, technology TV. And they went, whoa. Yeah. Like, we broadcast around the world. All over the world. Yeah. Yeah, People were watching us on that boat. Are you watching from any of those areas where where Jeff was? And we had uh, recently the the ladies from New Every Day also did a a tour down in California. Oh, cool. uh, They drove all through the the desert there and and did some pretty interesting stuff on their show. Um, speaking of new every day, uh, Shelly De Silva is becoming a bit of a Category Five celeb. Uh, she was here on Category Five Technology TV last Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Two weeks ago, she was on New Every Day. Nice. One week ago, well, a few days ago on Friday, she was back on New Every Day once again. I guess they liked her and asked her back. So, cool. Um, so yeah, she's uh, she's doing the rounds. And if you haven't seen some of the shows that we have here on Category Five. Technology TV is one of our shows. The network, uh, we're producing several shows, and you can catch those on our Roku channel. It's probably the easiest way to find them all. Uh, or you can just head over to, say, theshowshow.tv. That's one of my shows. And you can click on uh, the Category 5 menu and see all the different shows that we have there, and it'll take you out to their individual websites. That's cool. And we've also got, uh, I'm working on a new website for Category 5 TV, which is going to have all the shows all in one place. Ooh, that's kind that's of what I'm looking forward to. That's I just I just got a future show idea. I record, what is it? We took our SJ cam with us and did some oh, un- did. underwater video. But yeah. that's like a GoPro knockoff kind of idea. Yeah, yeah. We got it. I don't know. It's hundred and hundred fifty bucks. Yeah. Or Cat five TV slash action cam. Yeah. Go there. You'll see it. You'll see the accessories, and you can buy it right there. It was good, but I have no video editing software on my Linux system. Oh. So. Oh. I have video. That Open I need to shot edit. tutorial coming up. Yeah, all right. I, I just, we'll, we'll look at that. Yeah. We'll look at that. Uh, so your weekend just passed. What were you up to? Anything <laughs> going on? It was a busy weekend. Uh, Mother's nicer. Day weekend, my wife's That's, birthday. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, lots going on. It was busy here. 
Yeah. Boy, oh boy. Yeah. Mother's Day. Uh, like I got up and made blueberry pancakes for everybody. Nice. And then we did, we did church in the morning, had a nice Mother's Day service. And then in the afternoon, I went outside and I, and I actually, this is crazy, right? For Mother's Day. Um, our backyard, since we got a dog a couple years back, um, the dog has wrecked the backyard. So it is mud. Every time it rains, mud prints everywhere. Yep. So my poor wife you know, ugh, regretting the dog thing because all these muddy footprints and everything. And so I set out and, and I bought a cultivator. Yeah. A hand cultivator. I'm not the kind of guy that has $450 to pay for one of those gas ones. So I got the handheld, like it's like well sweeping done. mud. Um, so I cultivated the entire yard, laid down, wow. new, laid down new grass seed. That's a, a small, that's a, a big, small yard, but it was a big job. But that's a big job. It was a big job. I'm sore. If uh, if you need some fertilizer, yeah, uh, my dog apparently is on steroids. And does that help? Uh, let me tell you, steroids on the grass. Yeah, it kills my lawnmower. The grass is so thick in certain <laughs> areas. I'm like, ah, uh, we got to get the dog to go to other areas. Hmm. So. Hmm. You bore my dog for a few weeks. Saturday was fun here. Uh, it was the international uh, day of free comic books everywhere. How did I not know? What? Well, there's a short form for it. Free comic book day. <laughs> Just take out international. Garby knows what I'm talking about. It is international, though. Garby <laughs> there is, uh, it, it was participating in it at, at his store. Uh, and uh, viewers from all over the world were participating in Free Comic Book Day. I took my kids here at yeah. uh, Big B uh, Comics yes. here in Barrie. They're yes. a great little shop. And I, when I read that they were participating, I was like, how are they going to pull this off? It's a tiny little shop. Mm -hmm. It feels packed when it's just me and my kids in there. Yeah. And so to, f to fit in a whole bunch of guys dressed up in costumes plus their kids, <sighs> right? So the way it worked oh. was, okay, you get four free comic books just for showing up. If you dress up, however, you get, I think it was four more free comic books or something like that. No, it was two more free comic books if you dressed up, two more if you gave to the food bank. So we brought food bank donations. Yep. I dressed up as Spock, of course. That's what that picture was for. That's what that was for. All right. Uh, my kids, uh, my, my oldest son dressed up as Iron Man. Okay. And my youngest son dressed up as uh, Spider-Man. Yep. My daughter dressed up as a princess, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so we went, and my wife was there. She was dressed up as a beautiful woman. Well played. That's, that's what she dressed up as. Well and uh, so we got eight comic books each. That's amazing. I just grabbed Serenity. I grabbed Serenity right off the top of the pile and let the kids go to town. And so there was no limit on, on what book you could take? They had a giant table of, these are free comic book day comics. So these okay. are specifically for this day. And they're, they're full length comics and they, they had them all laid out and everything, huge stacks of them. And then boxes under the table for when they ran out. And they had tons of stuff. Everything from The Simpsons comic books to Serenity, mm -hmm. right? I had to go with that. Uh, they had um, the, the usual stuff like video game comics like uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Right. And they had um, stuff that I didn't recognize because I'm not, you know, I'm not on the up and up when it comes to comics. More of a sci-fi guy. That's yeah. why Serenity really stood out to me and I, I needed to get that. So I'm looking forward to reading it. But I also... That's exciting. I did make a purchase while I was there. Got my new wallet. I had very, to do it. Very it nice. had to be done. Very, at least it's not red. They so had you know, red. And I thought, no, if I buy red, it's just going to get stolen. Well, exactly. Because <laughs> this is old Trek. This is not TNG. This is, no. this is the original series. But I thought that was fun. So there you have it. I, I like that. There you go. More pleather. Uh, hey, Lots of pleather on the show. You tonight. never have too much pleather. Never have too much pleather. Sasha didn't know the difference when she was on the show. Do you remember she was talking about watching TV and she just seemed clueless when it came to the audio fidelity of the speakers on her television set. Did I hear that episode? I oh. thought maybe you weren't. Maybe you were remote again. Maybe you keep I doing remote. these things where you're like, hey, I got this fancy phone. I can remote in. It's true. <laughs> I don't recall the conversation, but then again. So then you must have, yeah. this must have been when you were in the backyard. Could be. Or something like that. I don't know. You, you, you'll look it up. Um, so she was talking about her television, and she can't tell the difference between my soundbar at home 
and her television's built in speakers. And I'm like, really? come on now. I don't even have to hear them, but I can, I really, I couldn't stand Sasha. I, and my wife does the same thing. Becca does the same thing where she, she didn't understand when I bought the sound bar because we watch our shows on the TV and it's got a built in speaker and, mm-hmm. and it's fine apparently. Right. But to me, the, the, uh, the kind of audio file that I am and having grown up with, you know, working with reel to reels and really focusing on quality. And, you know, I was the one who built speaker cabinets and put them position just right and they were all acoustically balanced and there was no crosstalk and no echo behind and all this kind of stuff i even put a subwoofer in my seat that's how good my sound was see onboard tv sound is about oh, as like a telephone. fine as riding your bike for a three-hour commute to work to me it, it's like it a telephone works, man. but it's not youth it's not worthwhile so i went out my, i bought a sound bar that I mounted above the TV. And yep. or, this is funny because I'm a, a bit of a geek, but I'm also stupid when it comes to renovations and stuff. Oh, no. Um, I put it up and I thought, oh, well, this would be smart if I kind of... The sound portion, the speakers are on the ends. Okay. And the TV is like a 37-inch, so the sound bar extends beyond it. Yep. So I'll put the sound bar kind of behind the TV so yep. that you just see them extending out the side. So that it's kind of hidden. It doesn't look too, too bad. Right. Mounted everything. Got it up and running use the remote and it doesn't work because the freaking remote <laughs> sensor is in the middle of the sound bar. Nice. So I'm like, come on now. Was it uh, IR based? No. Infrared? Ah, uh, the, the remote was. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, because you can get those uh, infrared, infrared repeaters. I know, but here I am, you know, I'm, I'm already having to explain myself. It had to go up like then. So I had to raise it up and put it up. Luckily, I, I, had, uh, I had used... Um, anchors that matched the the paint on the wall we have a pretty um mild brown tone on the wall so um so i did that and i i hung it up above i I had to move it yeah move it up (laughs) and it sounds so much better so much better see i I, in a previous job life i used to install satellites and i went to this one guy's house Uh, i think i talked about it on the show the guy that had the uh the 110 inch tv you mentioned it i did well so same job, different house though. Um, a guy had built um, his floor up, had subwoofers in the floor with a. Sa- uh, Who needs heated floors when you can have subwoofered floors? Well, it was a sand base, so that so that the <laughs> subwoofers were in the ground when this, and then when it vibrated through the sand, the entire floor rumbled. I like. It was amazing. Nice. It was so cool. So I keep saying to my wife when we renovate our family room. I, I'm going to be having some fun. And oh, she yeah. just looks at me and she's like, and how are you paying for Home it? Home theater. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, it's amazing what you can get in such a small package, like the sound bar versus the old, you know, big speakers yeah. kind of environment. Um, and my sound bar has Bluetooth, which I've just recently started tapping into really. I yep. think um, the, the House of Marley headphones, the, the Rebel BTs really yep. made me realize the quality of Bluetooth these days. Mm-hmm. So now I'm, Using my phone, and I'll sync it up to the soundbar with Bluetooth when we're not watching TV. TV's off, and the soundbar just works as a wireless speaker to my phone. Yep. So I can put on music, and it sounds great. Yeah. There's no latency. It's fantastic. Yeah. So. I, I do the same thing at home, and I love it. Yeah. It's great. Brilliant. What are you using? What do you do? Does it matter to you if you're just using the speakers built into your television, or what do you have? Well, according to Songbird... Uh they they rumble the floor by the washing machine spinning. Is that how is that how yours works? That that's how Songbird. You've works. used a maybe if you have got a Raspberry Pi connected to the sound system, you can make it rumble at just the right time. <laughs> that's right. Just the right time. Place the boots just on the side there so that it really gives it that shake. That'd be good. Yeah. Throw some change in there for a little bit of high treble. I don't remember what was in. I think it was boots in the washer, and and it was spinning so fast. And I heard this. <laughs> and it was loud, right? And, and so I'm like, what is, is the neighbor listening to dubstep or something? <laughs> so I went downstairs and it was hitting the wall of the dryer so hard that it was actually, f- or the washer, it was flexing no. in and out. Every time it would hit, it would flex out. Wow. I'm like, okay, we need to balance that load. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> so I've been there, done that. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, downstairs <sighs> on our big screen TV, we've got uh, an old, uh, the old computer speakers. Yep. I have a Logitech surround sound computer speaker set up. Mm-hmm. And it's got a nice little sub, and it sounds really good. It does, yeah. 
So I just plug it into the headphone jack of the TV and I'm done and done. Simple. Easy. Great upgrade. Real simple. And we're all about upgrades tonight. We're talking about the upgrades. Now, Spark, Sparkly is saying that he just got the Onkyo amp and a 7.1 speaker set. What's that one? Uh, an Onkyo. O-N-K-Y-O. I, I don't actually know. Is that how you pronounce it? Onkyo. Onkyo? With I, a 7.1 speaker set. Acoustic. I don't even know what an Onkyo is. That must be the brand. So where are they from? I'm not sure. Let's take a look at Amazon.com. And Elroy uh, says a 37-inch Vizio soundbar, but mounted in front of the TV. In front? Well, that will <laughs> obstruct the view, my friend. <laughs> Do you mean above? Oh, okay. So this is a component amp unit. Oh, I'm going to show okay. you real quick uh, what you can do. Anytime you're shopping on Amazon or anywhere like that, I know we've covered it on the show, but just really, really quickly, if you head on over to any of our show's websites, so category5.tv, for example, that's our website for technology TV, and you click on support the show, support us, and you'll see, I'm just bringing it up here um, so that you can see it. Just bringing up my screen. Here it comes. There it is. We've got... Uh, desktop presenter going there okay so support us and then we've got partner affiliate links oh we've got a new one this week my friend uh gear best uh check that out we're going to talk about that a little later click on the amazon of choice so if we went to amazon.com and then uh, what you're actually doing is you're supporting category 5 tv by doing your shopping here and that's the only way to do it because then you're you're actually using our uh link so there's the the onkyo amp Look at that. So the old style component unit. So uh, wow. I guess there's, there's something really to be said about still going with those, you know, larger, bigger is better kind mm -hmm. of units. But you can get smaller speakers that sound really, That's really true. good. That's true. And, and I'm really, looking really at those prices, you know, 250 bucks. You know, and you know, and Elroy was saying that he picked up a set. Uh, what did he get for 79 bucks? It was a Black Friday sale. No, had come on the, now. The Vizio soundbar. I'm like, I'm like. Even if you're looking at something at 250 bucks, you know, for an Onkyo, that's a that, that's a great deal, 250 bucks. But to pick up some, a sound system for 79 bucks, that's incredible. Can that? I would love to know more about what you got, and then we're going to see if we can find it on Amazon, and then and pr provide some links for you at our yeah. our online shop. Uh, because really, you know, if we can come up with some kinds of deals like that that are fantastic. And, you know, as we kind of branch out as well, we've got Amazon, eBay, now GearBest mm -hmm. as of yesterday Yes, um, as partners of the show, of the network. And uh, so these are places that you can do your shopping. And, and hey, if we can find some deals on that kind of stuff, fantastic. Um, I have got out of component units because of the kids. Right. I That's think fair. I would go back to it. Uh, but having kids, you know, my biggest fear, I have some nice speakers here at the studio and they are here at the studio because they are actually my own home stereo system. But I can picture my five-year-old putting his finger through the tweeter. Yeah, you don't want that. Don't want that. No, that won't go well. So they're here kind of for safekeeping and I use them for listening here. But uh, eventually they'll find their way back home. Yeah. So... Cool. That's Good times. Share your thoughts in the comments below in the chat room as well. Uh, but certainly if you're on demand, hey, if you're watching us on YouTube, comment below. Please like mm -hmm. and subscribe and uh, give us a thumbs up right there just below the video. All right. All right, Jeff. Um, should we get into the news? We're moving along with the show yeah. tonight. We can do that. Jump right into it, my friend. All right. It's Tuesday, May 10th, 2016. And here are the stories we're covering this week. The discovery of an Instagram glitch has earned a 10-year-old boy $10,000 from the Facebook bug bounty. Netflix knows what you're going to click on before you do. Uh, we won't see a new Need for Speed game this year, and a holographic smartphone has been developed by researchers in Canada. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. Now here's another great way you can support the shows you love from the Category 5.TV network by shopping at GearBest. That's right, Jeff. Uh, Cat5.TV slash GearBest. It's an online store for the geek streak in you. Or the loved ones. Well, of course. I mean, especially your loved ones, right? Uh, because Cat5.TV slash GearBest, quite frankly, has all of the greatest tech gifts that you could ever hope for at rock bottom prices. Do they have cell phones? You betcha. Cat5.tv slash GearBest has a wide assortment of unlocked Android cell phones and tablets. What about compu uh, 
consumer electronics. Those make a great gift. Absolutely. From high-tech watches to action cameras, headphones, even virtual reality headsets. Cat5.tv slash GearBest has you covered. They literally have it all, Jeff. Literally. Really? It's like a superstore right from the comfort of your own chair at your computer through the interweb. Yeah. I, there's no way they have it all. It's true. It's just a bunch of ele- uh, random electronics. Test me. Um, what about clothes? Yep. Both men and women, fashionable apparel at rock bottom, super duper prices. Kind of like this. Well, look at this coat. What do you think? It's a slimming mock leather jacket. I love it. It's available for less than $30 plus free shipping at cap5.tv slash gear best. All right. You kind of got me there. Wow. Any other questions for me, Jeff? Uh, now that the winter has passed, flying season. Do they have any good deals on, say, drone copters? Oh, my goodness. Well, check this out. Dude, they have everything. Check out over 500 various drones. And not only that, they're available marked down by about 30 to up to 63% off the regular price. Love it. What's the website again? Well, you're going to find GearBest on our partners' pages for any of your favorite Category 5 TV shows like New Every Day, Category 5 Technology TV, The Pixel Shadow. Uh, but of course, if you want to shop absolutely right now and you want to go straight to the site, all you have to do is visit cat5.tv slash GearBest. See, that's easy. Cat5.tv slash GearBest. That's right. Happy shopping. I'm Jeff Weston, and here are the top stories from the Category 5.tv newsroom. Social media giant Facebook has paid a $10,000 reward to a 10-year-old Finnish boy for finding a glitch in its picture-sharing app, Instagram. Johnny, whose last name was not released for privacy reasons, go figure, is the youngest ever recipient of Facebook's bug bounty, which is paid to users who find bugs or weaknesses in its platforms. He says, I wanted to see if Instagram's comment field could stand malicious code. Turns out it couldn't. Uh, That's what Johnny told Finland's El Talati newspaper. (laughs) Yeah, you know, sorry about that. Thanks. There's a newspaper in Finland that uh, that That has an awesome name. Just difficult for me to say. Anyway, Facebook said the glitch was fixed in February and the reward was paid in March. Johnny, who is still too young to have a Facebook or Instagram account of his own, which is ironic, said that he learned coding from YouTube videos and found a way to delete user comments from Instagram accounts. Hmm. The young coder said, I could have deleted anyone's comments from there. He said he was thinking about a career in data security, but for now he plans on buying a new bike and a football with his reward money. A new bike with rocket booster boots. From GearBest. Cat5.tv slash GearBest. I love how you were able to segue that into an advertisement for supporting the show. <laughs> and buying cool stuff. It's true. but I mean, That's I, crazy, man. I, I've got a nine-year-old at home. He gets excited when he can, like, kill an Enderman or something in Minecraft. <laughs> Hacking into Instagram? Are you, a 10-year-old? Are you kidding me? And getting me? a $10,000 bounty. That's amazing. That's $1,000 per year of this kid's life. See, and, and I hear this story, and I think about, um, about 8 to 10 years ago, there was that kid named Mike Rowe who bought Mike Rowe Microsoft, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, I think he got like a $6,000 computer from Microsoft for copyright. Oh, yeah? So they could buy his website. <laughs> like, this kid just hacks in and gets ten grand. There that's, you go. That's amazing. There that's you a cool go. Story. So that's the moral of the story here, folks, is it pays to hack websites. <laughs> <laughs> to clarify, they're looking for what do they call them? White hackers? White hat hackers. White hat hackers. Uh, so these are you know, you're you're hacking with the intention of ex not exploiting for malicious use, but for exploiting so that you can notify the companies right. of the potential of being exploited for malicious use. I do believe that some country, uh, companies, I think Google's one of them, that actually hires their IT guys that way. Sure. McAfee is another example of a company that generates right. viruses. Right. I don't know if it's true, <laughs> but it's a theory. It works. Why are there all these viruses and McAfee suddenly is able to figure it out? Fight them before everyone else. Uh, <laughs> Not true. Making, Not true. Making conspiracies. I, I know. That was just a joke. All right. Every time you watch something on Netflix, 
Netflix is watching you back. Dun, dun, dun. If you've used Netflix recently, you may have been uh, an unwitting participant in the global streaming services experiments. In 2014, the company conducted research that revealed users spend about 1.8 eight seconds deciding if they want to watch something. It also found that the users pick what to click on by uh, assessing the thumbnail image that uh, Netflix presents to them on logging in. Through a series of A-B tests, the company realized that it could greatly widen TV show or movies audience simply by changing those thumbnail images. Netflix then implemented a system that tests images based on their research. Netflix once used artwork from the studios for thumbnails, but that art wasn't designed to be viewed uh, uh, in a stream, competing with other images. Today, Netflix designs its own images based on what it has found users are most likely to click on. In an unbreakable Kimmy, uh, Kimmy Schmidt test, for instance, users engage with the last image in which Kimmy and her friend Titus both have strange, goofy looks on their faces. Is that what we need to do, Jeff? Put strange... Let's goofy- try it. How many people are going to watch this video? We gotta hold it for like I think ten, just need ten seconds. We just need the frame. Yeah, but it takes a, a photo every ten seconds. Oh, does it? Yeah. So we have to do that again. Okay, ready? You ready? And go. Silly face. And everybody in the web chat is going, "What is going? Are we on? silly? Are we silly enough?" Somebody's sitting there going, "My screen froze. The feed is frozen." This is gonna be the thumbnail, folks, and I want you to click on it. <laughs> It's not 10 seconds. I I hope it is. I think it's 20. Okay. I think we're done, but my face is stuck. (laughs) Okay. Back to the news. Um, Anyway, Netflix (laughs) Netflix has found it's not universal, however. The images that appeal to a Netflix subscriber in the United States may not be alluring to someone scrolling through Netflix in, say, Brazil, uh, as shown in in its grid of images. Smart marketing or creepy profiling? Eh, Well, you let us know your thoughts in the comments below. For one thing... Unwitting participant, witting participant. I think it's more so the fact that you didn't know that they were testing you. Yeah, you know. It's Netflix. Come on now. Basically, anything that's internet-based, you're being tested somewhere. Netflix is AI to monitor your viewing habits. That's why it's so cheap. Of course. Hello. Uh, But also, how fantastic is it that when I fire up netflix for the first time in you know on the weekend or something it's got all these new shows for me and mm-hmm. they're perfect yep see here's i i hear the story and then my first thought is they're going to use this for marketing sure because you know i mean right now netflix doesn't have to give its subscriber data mm-hmm. as far as how many people view a particular show and, and the studios are freaking out because they're going we have we're paying this crazy money for you to yep. have this show and we don't know how many people are watching it so now Netflix is going to be able to turn around. This is my suspicion. I haven't read this anywhere. But they're going to turn around and go, hey, uh, with the proper imaging, based on our research, we can make your show more popular for an increased fee. There's that. But think about this. If they're able to present to me shows that, yeah, I'm going to love this, and it's happened where we're flipping through their recommendations and we find shows that we will watch. We don't binge watch, but we'll watch one show a night and we will watch it from episode one right. of season one right to the end. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, we've been waiting for Kimmy Schmidt season two. And now that it's here, we're working our way. Yeah. All right. So it, they're smart. They, they make good recommendations. So now flip that, reverse it, take it away from the consumer, which is me, and say to the broadcaster and the production studios, hey, I know you're working with X network. We have this many people that will watch your show. Because we have these numbers that say these people want your programming. Mm -hmm. If you don't bring your stuff to us, you're going to be dealing with these numbers. You might have a million viewers. We have 10 million that are just sitting there waiting to watch your show. So give it to us. We're not going to pay you what they're going to pay you. But we're going to pay you a small amount per viewer. And it's going to equalize because there's this many people. A much wider audience. That's the yeah. way networking has gone, and I think that the intelligence behind their algorithms are able to use it not only for the consumer to give me new programming, but also to drive people, uh, broadcasters, uh, uh, show creators to want to include their shows on the Netflix platform. You know, as, as we're discussing this, I'm starting to realize I'm seeing a lot of like 
Glitter Force girls popping up in my YouTube feed. I that, think I need to create my profile I and think not so. let the kids watch it. When they created <laughs> profiles, uh, first thing I did was uh, I renamed my profile, which was like all SpongeBob and yes. everything else. Uh, I renamed it Kids. Yeah. And I created one called Parents. Yeah, I think and I need to do that. And Parents does not have SpongeBob in it. I should hope not. Yeah. But, but it probably has My Little Pony. Definitely My Little <laughs> Pony. <laughs> right. Two years ago, plus a few days ago, Ghost Games told the world that there would uh, be no new Need for Speed in 2014. Now, skipping the year, it explained, would allow it to create a highly innovative addition to the series in 2015, which ultimately turned into 2016 for the PC. Today, the studio put forth a very similar message, saying that it's taking stock and that the follow-up won't be out until sometime in 2017. Since we released Need for Speed last November, we've been humbled by the support from our players and the ongoing collaboration with you, the studio said. We've learned so much from your feedback, and much of that has gone into shape the free content updates uh, to Need for Speed. Features such as manual transmission, wrap sharing, snapshot pro, speed lists, customization items, bigger garage, and uh, more will come directly from your suggestions. We've also introduced hot rods, saw the return of drag racing, and once again went toe-to-toe with the infamous Eddie. Ghost Games emphasize that it won't be going quiet between now and the announcement of the next game. The feedback our community has already given us is uh, already shaping the future of Need for Speed, and it will continue to do so as we move further into development for the next game, so please do keep it coming, it said. I remember playing Need, like the first Need for Speed back on my Windows 95 machine. Brilliant. And that's the one... <laughs> Where, you know, if you had a fast processor, the game was crazy fast. And mm. if you have slow and it's super slow. And you, I truthfully, I haven't played Need for Speed since. It ruined it for me. And I just haven't gone back. You, you didn't like it? Well, it's because my processor was too fast. So like, oh. I hit to drive up and it was like, boom, and I cleared the course. So I, I, was I was a big Need for Speed fan back in those days, the mm-hmm. early days. Then Hot Pursuit came out and I loved it, but. It was starting to feel more like a, um, how do you say it, like a chapter kind of game. Like you had to achieve things in order to unlock other things. Yeah. I like to just drive. I want to just drive. Yeah. That's what I want. Yeah. Anyway, we'll have to see. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't think I'll probably play it, but whatever. Canadian researchers have developed what they are claiming is the world's first holographic, flexible smartphone with a bendable display that allows multiple people looking at it, uh, the de- device, to see different 3D images depending on their perspective. To view, to view the device called Holoflex, you don't need those thumb, uh, dumb plastic glasses you have to wear in the cinema to watch 3D movies, and it doesn't employ head tracking to tailor the appearance to the viewer, as seen in devices like the newer Nintendo 3DS. Instead, the smartphone sports a full HD LED display with 920 by 1080 resolution, and, but it's one that's flexible. So how does it actually work? Well, when the device displays images, it renders them into 12 pixel wide circular blocks. Over the top of the display is a thin 3D printed micro lens array consisting of over uh, 16,000 fisheye lenses. When the pixel blocks are viewed through the lens array, it makes the images look 3D to the viewer depending on the angle, when in fact they're actually only two dimensional. The one downside to this technique is it makes the appearance of the display decidedly more pixelated. Once the full HD resolution is effectively downsampled via the image rendering process, you're left with a pretty chunky looking 160 by 104 resolution image. Still, it's an impressive effect that makes 3D images viewable by multiple people, multiple people simultaneously. And the team de- that developed it says the technology could change how we use our devices. For example, with the touch screen, you can manipulate virtual objects on screen on X and Y axes, axes as much as any smartphone or tablet allows, but flexing the display could raise and lower the object on the Z axis. If coupled with sensors that can detect the user and the environment around them, other interesting applications could be possible as well. One of the researchers says by employing a depth camera, users can also perform holographic video conferences with one another. When bending the display, users literally pop out of the screen and can even look around each other with their faces rendered correctly from any angle by the onlooker. That's cool. That is kind of neat. I, I'm, I'm not a 
visual person, so I'm having a hard time picturing this phone, but that's that's cool. I love the way technology is changing. It's pretty neat. I just am wondering where the selling point, where it, where it will step out of novelty and jump into actual usability. See, that's the great thing about tech. I mean, even if you've got something that is a novel idea today, somebody's going to take that idea and go, I got an application, I got to run with it, and suddenly it opens this whole new mm-hmm. realm of technological advancement. Yeah, maybe the, the idea behind it could influence the TV of tomorrow. Exactly. But thinking of a 1080p screen that then becomes such a low-resolution image. So you think about a 4K screen and stepping down to like 480p in order to get this 3D effect. Now, it might be cool as resolutions, you know, so say an 8K screen. Right, okay. That could produce a 720. I'm just throwing numbers out there. I don't know the actual math, but say it could do a 720p holographic image. That's pretty decent that I could feel like I could reach out and touch the thing that's in front of me. We're probably not that far off from getting there. I think so. I mean, things are progressing pretty quickly. So, anyway, it's kind of neat. Kind of neat indeed. If it comes out, we'll have to get it on the uh, Cat5 store. Yeah, we'll be like, you can bend the Z axis and we'll be like... (laughs) That's right. That crazy shot of us with our heads frozen. Yeah, it'll pop right out of your screen. Oh, the Halloween you can, like, episode where it's just the You can, the like, heads. tap me in the forehead. That, yeah, that headless go. or the head episode. We'd just be floating there? Yeah, it'd be totally yeah. fun. <laughs> right. It'd be great. Big I thanks. <laughs> the ideas are just floating around That's here, folks. That's true. Yeah. All right, big thanks this week to our community of viewers for submitting stories to us. If you found a news story that you'd like to send, email it to newsroom at category5.tv. For all your tech news with a slight Linux bias, visit the category5.tv newsroom at newsroom.category5.tv. For the Category 5.TV Newsroom, I'm Jeff Weston. Thanks, Jeff. This is Category 5 Technology TV. You'll find our website at www.category5.tv. Please do check us out. Comment below. Make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, If you love this video, give us the thumbs up and uh, tell your friends about Category 5 Technology TV as well. We do this every single week. We've been doing it for 451 weeks, and uh, we're still going strong, and we are going to do this as long as we possibly can. So we'll be saying 800 weeks at some point. We'll, be, we'll actually be popping out of the little phone screens. I love it. Now, something else that's trying to go as long as it possibly can is this computer behind us. I know. We're trying to breathe new life into older hardware. So, folks, if you're ready for it, let's jump over to our old computer over there. Jeff, my man, we've got this old system that Kelsey two weeks ago had installed Ubuntu Mate on. Yes. And when she installed it, it breathed new life into this old system that was running Windows Vista Basic. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually do some clockwork here. We're going to time, you know, what's the performance like? We've installed Ubuntu Mate. We know that it runs. We know that uh, that it boots up and works great. It's it is in all essences a usable computer now from an old piece of hardware. Just for reference, now this computer is, whoa. I got some cool sounds going on. It's a compact 6510B. So it's not a bad little machine, but it is older, and it was running Windows Vista Basic, and out of the box, when it arrived here, it was basically just a write-off e-waste. And I love that it's like an inch thick. It is very, <laughs> very thick. It's heavy, and it probably, you know, it's, it's, it's good enough to want to wanna revive. Yes. So tonight what we're going to do is we're going to compare that stock hard drive. It's a spinning 5400 RPM hard drive that came with this laptop. We're going to compare the performance, not scientifically, but in real life terms. Mm-hmm. You know, how, how fast is it to boot? How fast is it to open a program? How fast is it to find files? So those are the three tests that we're going to do tonight. We're going to look at it with the stock hard drive that came with it, with uh, Ubuntu Mate. And then we are going to look at it with a beautiful uh, Kingston uh, HyperX series Savage hard drive. Those are the SSDs from their gaming line of hardware. Yeah. Um, they are beautiful. You can find out more about them at Cap. 5.tv slash SSD. So through our performance tests tonight, again, not scientific, just looking at it from a, a layperson perspective, we're going to determine is it really worth spending the little bit extra to throw an SSD hard drive in an older computer to breathe new life into it. So what I've done out of the box, 
already we have Ubuntu Mate installed on both hard drives. So mm-hmm. we don't have to wait for that tonight. Um, and uh, you know how it was done two weeks ago on episode number 449, Category 5 Technology TV uh, installed Ubuntu Mate on this computer um, so that it was done. And the version that I installed on the, uh, the SSD is exactly the same. Same flash drive, same settings, same everything. Nothing has been installed. It has never been connected to the internet. So no updates have been run. No indexing has happened on the hard drive. So w- this is a real uh, test one-to-one. Mm-hmm. If you could pass me my phone there, Jeff, we're going to use this uh, as our very scientific way of clocking Uh, the performance of this system. So we're just going to bring up a stopwatch here. I've got my clock app. And let's jump over here. And what we're going to do first is we're going to boot up this computer system. There we go. I'm kind of wrapped around here. So I've got my clock. There it is. It's as simple as that. Jeff, here's the power button. I'm going to get you to push that at the count of three. Well, I'm going to count down from three. And I'm going to push start on my stopwatch. So three, two, one, now. Okay, so we are counting. Jeff has pushed the button, and here we go. So right now in this computer is the stock hard drive. So this is uh, a 5,400 RPM standard laptop hard drive. And what I'm timing to is uh, I've got it set to automatically log in the user account on both hard drives. And when the Ubuntu Mate welcome screen is finished loading, I'm going to press stop. So we're up to 27, 28. 30 seconds so far. No visual input uh, or output from the computer other than the square. There we go. Now we've got the Ubuntu Mate logo. We're at 40 seconds. You know, Elroy was saying in the chat room that, uh, thank goodness this isn't Windows, it'd be taking forever. I was thinking the exact same thing. (laughs) Well, you know, a lot of people do time the performance of their computer by, you know, does it turn on quickly? Yep, It's important. And uh, it's a funny thing. Here we go. I got to be ready. Cursor. Screen, come on, screen. Wi-Fi network's detected. There's the welcome screen, and boom. One minute, seven seconds, point two. So All I don't right. know if you... Do you want to jot that down for me, sure. Jeff? Jeff is our, our scorekeeper, so he's going to keep track of uh, exactly what, uh, what we're looking at here. So All that's right. pretty slow. One minute, seven Seven seconds, point point two. two. There you have it. Okay. So pretty slow indeed, but it's working. It's up and running. But for an older computer, even to boot up at a minute. Yeah, and it's usable. Yep, exactly. So we're happy. We're happy. We've breathed new life into the system. Okay, let's go back to our system. I am going to simply uh, close this window. Okay. Because we want to do everything exactly the same between both computers. And Jeff, what I'm going to get you to do is click on Applications and then Office, and we're going to go into LibreOffice Writer. But we're going to, before you actually press it, we're going to count down from three again. So I'll Even let you, I'll let you hover it. No, nope. okay. we'll, we'll do this in real time. So if you uh, point to it uh, and hover, and I'll count down from three, two, one. Now, here we go. This won't, this won't take long at all. Once it's completely loaded, there we go, 11.3 seconds. There we have it, folks. So that is with the spinning hard drive. Now, the final test that we want to do, as I mentioned, there has never been any indexing on this hard drive. So I'm just going to jump into my terminal. Let's see if I can find a terminal here. System tools, maybe? There it is, Mate, Mate, sorry, terminal. I'm just going to go sudo ls just to see if I actually have super user pass. Yeah, I do. Okay, so I can become super user. So in the home folder, I'm going to go sudo so I don't get any, uh, any errors. Let's clear that. sudo um, find dot dash iname in case sensitive search for the name star dot txt. All right. Ready for it? I'm going to reset my timer. So you've recorded that. Yep. For uh, LibreOffice. 11.3 seconds. As soon as I say go, we're going to uh, hit enter. Three, two, one, go. This is doing a search through the entire hard drive for all text files. Remember that these are exact duplicates between the two hard drives, so we're going to be seeing a real performance difference between the uh, solid-state hard drive from Kingston and the, uh, the actual built-in hard drive that came with this computer. So let's wait until it gives us a prompt again as if we can 
go back to using our computer, searching through, finding all kinds of stuff that came with the Ubuntu Mate system. Any comments? There we go. 36.9 seconds to do a search. 36.9 seconds. 36.9. There right. you have it. All I right. got all so those saved. Now, are we ready to see how easy it is to upgrade our computer to a solid-state hard drive? Absolutely. The one thing I'll mention, uh, as I mentioned, that I've already done is I've already set up Ubuntu Mate exactly the same on this uh, Kingston Savage uh, from the HyperX line. So this is the Savage 480 megabyte hard drive. And this particular, um, now what I've got is I've got the, the kit. So this is an upgrade option that's available for you. It's called a bundle kit. You can go to cat5.tv slash SSD. And what this includes is the beautiful HyperX hard drive. Uh, this is the HyperX Savage. And they all look the same, but they come in various capacities from 120 all the way up to 960 gigabytes. That 960 excites me. They're so fast. And, and it was under so 500 good. bucks too. They're cheap. Which is amazing. I know. This one here, I'm using the 480 uh, gigabyte hard drive uh, for this test. Um, you may go with something smaller. You can go with the 120 gig. It's still going to be bigger than what came in it. This kit, this, uh, the bundle kit, comes with this guy here, which is a, a brilliant little bonus. Just a, a nice little uh, screwdriver, but good quality. Oh, nice. Okay, so we're going to use this for our upgrade tonight. Okay. So it's got a Phillips, two different size Phillips, and a flathead. I'm going to grab that there. Just what you would expect from a, a good quality. It's a solid metal. Uh, nice. Looks like it's a tooled piece as well. Yeah. Looks like it's all one solid piece. Nice. So there we go. We've got our screwdriver. This also, surprisingly, the bundle comes with uh, an external chassis. Oh, no way. So you can actually put it in an external chassis, and it came with it uh, no extra charge, right? Wow. So it's got the cables and the setup and anything that you need. But having an external chassis that came with the uh, the bundle kit, what a bonus That's that awesome. is, right? So you can take it out of a computer and move it in. It also has a 3.5 millimeter adapter plate. Yep. So this will allow you to install this in a desktop computer versus tonight we're installing it in a laptop Man, computer. They think of everything. It's all included. So And, of course, uh, you can follow the links and just get the hard drive itself at right. cat5.tv slash SSD, where if you follow the links through to Amazon, you'll see the bundle kits if they are available for the particular model that you look at. So here we go. Okay, so let's, uh, let's throw this into this computer. Nice and simple. Let's get a look. There are a couple of screws. Every computer is just a little bit different. This one has two screws to get into the, uh, the hard drive com compartment here. Make sure you ground yourself, that is to discharge any static electricity. Uh, you can do that by touching uh, a ground plate, uh, anything that has a, a grounding, a computer chassis that is unpainted. This is my hard drive, so this hard drive can be removed with a single screw right here. It's a little bit different for each computer, but you'll see there is the spinning hard drive. Mm -hmm. I hope you guys can see that okay. So it's a Hitachi uh, 5400 RPM, little tiny hard drive. So I'm just going to remove these quick little mounting screws. Now, in the chat room, uh, Revy Jank is saying that he's added three of these to his laptops, and it was a welcome change. So already we've got viewers who are saying, yes, I love these hard drives, which is great. You know what? It makes such a difference in performance, and you'll be surprised. I think these days, uh, and I don't know, Jeff, if you can hit the... Uh, I, I'll teach you how to, how to work this someday. There we go. <laughs> the... Uh, the fact is, is that it's a, an economical way to upgrade your computer, and, and the performance gains we're going to see here are more than they're, – they're exceptional, but they're more than just getting a faster computer. Right. Like, all together, you're going to be more productive. It's going to function quicker. You're not going to be waiting for simple tasks. And, you know, when you open a program, you want it to open. Of course. So can we actually get this old computer to operate at a speed that is reasonable? Mm -hmm. like really reasonable so that this thing can actually run our programs and become a computer that we're going to use. That's the question tonight. So you'll see I've put the HyperX hard drive here in the, uh, in the mounting um, kind of frame that came with the laptop here. So this is just how it mounted into the computer. There is a slight bit of magnetism on this uh, on the screwdriver, so that's kind of handy if you fumbling around with sausage fingers like I am. <laughs> there we go. Make sure that your SATA is facing the right way. These ports, that's your 
power and data. Okay. And now I realize for a tech show, you would assume that most viewers would be fairly tech savvy, but for the, anybody who's watching that isn't, does the hard drive fit in a specific way or could they put it in upside down by accident? Yeah, they could put it in upside down, but then it wouldn't go in and it's only going to okay. go in one way. So what I would do is observe how it came out and then mount your new hard drive the same way. Um, it's, it's pretty easy to tell if you've done it wrong. You can go back and it's, it's only four screws. It's not a hard thing to redo. Uh, but be care you know, you don't want to jam it. If it's not seeming to fit, retrace your steps find out what you've done wrong. Uh, and for those of you who have never done a computer upgrade like this, it's really not that complicated. So you purchase this piece of hardware through cat5.tv slash SSD, and now you've got the SSD hard drive, and we're able to upgrade our computer as simply as this. So now this drive simply drops in there, and then we slide it into the back plane, and now it's mounted into, it's basically the drive is connected to the motherboard. Okay, so then just that simple. Just that simple. Now we screw it back in. This one's kind of nice that the screws have a spring mechanism so that I can't actually lose the, the screws on there. That's kind of nice. Like that. Okay. I like those little features. Yeah. There we go. Got the plate back on, and we're actually ready. So if you were doing this yourself and you've just purchased a, a HyperX Savage hard drive, through cat5.tv slash SSD. If you've just done that, you've just installed this hard drive, keep in mind that hard drive comes to you blank. It has nothing on it, mm -hmm. okay? So it's a clean slate. Now, you're going to have to either, if you, if you want to, you can image, which is to make a duplicate of your uh, old hard drive onto the new hard drive, which you, yep. can, you can do that using a tool like CloneZilla, for example, that's free from clonezilla.org. Or in our case, we're just installing Ubuntu Mate Linux. It's a free operating system. You can download it from ubuntu-mate.org. It's spelled Ubuntu u-b-u-n-t-u-m-a-t-e.org. You'll be able to download that for free and install it on your system. So keep in mind that it's going to be a clean slate. You're not going to have any of your files on there, so just be mindful of that. You'll want to copy them to something else. Okay, are we ready for the same tests? Absolutely. It was really that simple. Could it be, Jeff? I'm going to bring back up my clock here and so ready to power on. The time we're looking to beat is 1 minute and 7.2 seconds. <laughs> do you think we can do it? I think we can do it. Three, two, one, go. All right, we're getting the post. Booting up the, in, the Ethernet adapter. i got to hover over the stop symbol. There we go, because that's where we were with the other hard drive. Yeah. We're booting up this old laptop. It's a Compact 6510B, now with an SSD from Kingston well, HyperX. Wait a minute. Don't wait a minute. It's not, what? You're kidding me. What? What was that? Like 30 seconds tops? 28.7, and I think I was a little delayed pushing stop. You're kidding me. I'm not kidding you, buddy. That's just the hard drive change. That's it. All I did was put in a HyperX hard drive. You're kidding me. Hold All on. Right, 28.7 28 seconds. 7. Compensating for sausage fingers, we're going to call it 28.2 <laughs> seconds. Yeah, there you go. All right, let's bring up LibreOffice Writer. You ready for it? What, what was our time on the other computer? 11.3 uh, seconds. 11.3 is the number to beat. Three, yeah. two, one, go. I think I missed it again. It was too quick. The two, two seconds. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't even feel it. I, I thought I was going to be able to have a nap. Uh, that's amazing. Okay. Uh, wow. Final test is the moment of truth. And remember, neither of these hard drives have ever been indexed. That means that my find statement is the first, in, uh, the first time that this hard drive has ever been looked at by the, by the, the system. Okay. So I'm going to go sudo ls which is what exactly what I did on the last hard drive. Then I typed clear, and then I typed sudo find dot for current folder, because I'm in the root folder, right? CD slash. Uh, now I am. Good thing I checked. sudo find dot dash i name for in case sensitive search star dot txt. Okay, so if you're standing by. I am. Three, two, one, go. What's the number to beat? Uh, we're looking to be 36.9 seconds. Okay. 
It's done. What? What? Four point. What is that? Four point five seconds. Four point nine. Four point nine. Four point nine seconds. The These are identical, folks. I, completely unscientific, but completely true. That switching your hard drive to a Kingston HyperX Savage hard drive. This is a solid state drive with no moving parts. Has now taken it from eleven seconds. To, lo- to do a, s- a find on your hard drive? Uh, no, 36.9. 36.9? For a search. <laughs> to to 4.9. You shaved off 32 seconds. That's, okay, hold on. Hold on. I, we got to do, hold on. Uh, 4.9 divided by 36.9. Amazing. Go to cat5.tv slash SSD. They're not an overly expensive upgrade for your computer, but here you have it. It's an old computer that we have breathed new life into by doing two things. For one thing, we've put a solid-state hard drive in it, and second, secondary, we have, uh, we've uh, upgraded the hard drive to a Kingston HyperX so, Savage so, SSD. You know, I may have my math wrong here, but just on the search for the .txt, that's a 7.5 times faster search. Just like that. That's wow. incredible. And what was the other one? Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> you do the math, folks. I mean, it's... One it's, minute, seven seconds versus 28.2 for the start. I it. knew it was going to be faster, Jeff. I didn't realize it was going to be that stark. That thing is... I don't... Do you notice? It's, it's performing like a newer system now. This thing was free because it was e-waste. So if I close this, it's instantaneous. Let's bring up my home folder. And it's like, it's responsive. It's m- navigating like nothing else. And that's a boot up of almost three times faster. Let's, yeah, it's ridiculous. So why would you l- leave that old hard drive in when for such a small amount you can upgrade your hard drive? That's amazing. We've proven it, man. Mythbusters. Okay, I've got it. Just a- like that really cruddy laptop at home that's yep. i was telling you about this Scooting before again. the show it's like nine years old <clears throat> mm-hmm. i am ready to throw you want to throw thing throw one of these in there buddy uh yeah, yeah. i thought i'd like revived it with putting linux on but yeah. i need to switch over the hard drive i think so that's amazing i absolutely adore these hard drives uh, incidentally, the HyperX Savage is what we're running in our broadcast server. So when we're broadcasting live, we have two of these in there. Uh, one of them is for read, one of them is for write, um, which is overkill. That's my overkill. Yeah. But basically, um, Wirecast runs Windows 10 on one of the drives, and the second drive is recording to disk because we record raw motion JPEG. Right. That's it. There's your upgrade, folks. Check it out. Breathe new life into older hardware with Ubuntu Mate and the Kingston HyperX Savage solid-state hard drives. Check out the specs. Find out more. See where you can get them at cat5.tv slash SSD. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's been a fun show. Great show. Always fun to have you here, and I understand that you're going to be back. I will be back next week, yes. Going to be back next week, and next week we've got an amazing show for you. We're going to be looking at how... Uh, 3D printing is absolutely revolutionizing industry. Yeah. We're going to take a look at that. We're going to talk with uh, an industry uh, professional who understands this stuff and is going to break it down to us. Yeah. So this book looks that. really cool. It is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to learn a lot next week. And I will see you next Tuesday night. Jeff will be here. I'll be here. Have a great week. See ya.